Pretty soon after we replaced the fuel pump in this 96 Jeep Cherokee and got it back on the road, it's given us a bit of a headache. The first major problem was the crank position sensor, but once we replaced that, the Jeep developed a stumble at higher RPMs and started to run worse and worse. The fuel filter seemed okay, but it sure seemed like there was some sort of fuel delivery problem. The year this Jeep was made, and only that year, they used an in-tank fuel pressure regulator and we assumed that could be related to the problem. The only way to get a replacement regulator was to get an entirely new fuel sending unit, which also seemed like a decent enough idea since the gas gauge didn't work either. We weren't entirely sure it was fuel related, but when the engine stumbled it sure sounded like it wasn't getting enough gas. The fuel rail in the Jeep does have a test port, but unfortunately I didn't have any luck getting my cheap gauge to work with it. But obviously there was some amount of pressure, and if it was stumbling at high RPMs that would mean the pressure was dropping off. And over time, the problem was getting worse and worse, with the Jeep stumbling at lower RPMs and sooner during the drive. We had a lot of ideas and got a lot of suggestions as to what it could be, including the store brand crank position sensor that we replaced the old one with, which was later replaced with a Mopar and made no difference. There were also a lot of suggestions that the catalytic converter was clogged, but since there wasn't much of an exhaust, this was fairly easy to check just by shining a flashlight through it. It's a little harder to see this on camera than it is in person, but you can see straight through the element in the catalytic converter, so there don't appear to be any problems there. We had also previously replaced the ignition coil, as well as cleaned up the cap and rotor contacts. There were some suggestions that the upstream O2 sensor could do some really weird things if it failed in these Jeeps, so switching the positions of the two and seeing if anything changed was an idea. We had also considered getting a junkyard distributor and swapping the whole thing. But before trying any of that, we wanted to see if the new fuel pressure regulator could help. We also decided that the way to go here was dropping the entire gas tank so that we could check the condition of the inside, make sure there were no rust holes, and clean it out. We already knew it was pretty nasty in there from when we replaced the fuel pump. So one afternoon, Rob drove the Cherokee over and we decided to drop the tank. Vroom vroom. Sounds like that because of the high output. Not because there's no muffler. Since it had been replaced previously, the fuel filter just used worm gear hose clamps and they weren't all rusted, so they were easy enough to remove. Then there's this plastic clip holding the fuel hose to the body of the car, which gave me quite a fight. I spent, well, way too much time trying to remove this clip intact. It's a pretty normal little plastic clip, but it was just not coming out, so I ended up breaking it off. Was it tied up there? Meanwhile, Rob removed this little panel to get access to the filler hose. We'd barely done anything and were already making a mess. Here you can see the filler hose and the vent attached to the body. They're also just using worm gear hose clamps, so a socket and a ratchet will do the trick. It was around this time that Rob noticed something hanging underneath the car and we got a little sidetracked. Yeah, unfortunately the Jeep was finally starting to shed its floor pan. That's the carpet up there? Yep, that's what it's stuck to. Well, I mean, yeah, we knew it was pretty rusty. Yep. Frame rails are still good. So I guess it rusted from the inside then. In case all of the weather stripping modifications on the Jeep weren't a hint, this thing must have leaked a lot of water. And that water sitting around inside of it rusted the floor out from the inside. There are a few spots like this, but the driver's side is the worst. Unfortunately, we knew this was going to be a problem since we first looked at it, but it's still a major bummer. I screwed around a little bit with trying to use an external fuel pump to get the gas out of the tank, which didn't really work, and then we realized that the gas tank strap nuts were not going to be easy to remove. It's just two big steel straps. There's no bolts in the back, it's just hooked up in there. There's no exhaust in the way. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it's two like J bolts in the front. They're rusty, but they don't look like they're gonna fall apart or anything. They look okay. We could get them to move, but only just. It took a lot of force, was too deep to use a socket, and the ratcheting wrenches barely even fit on there. And that was about when we gave up. 
We started pretty late in the day and we were running out of sunlight and the jeep was being annoying, so we decided to come back to it later and instead of working, we ended up having a loud off between the Cherokee with no muffler and the V8 S10 Blazer. And with that science done, Rob headed home. It was a little over two months before we finally got back to it, and in the meantime I kept thinking about those gas tank straps and how I really didn't want to deal with them. So the morning before Rob brought the Cherokee over to work on again, I dug through some of the spare tools in the garage and found these two deep sockets. These are Husky brand and came with their electric ratchet. One is a 14mm and the other is a 916 they are both six-sided, three-inch drive deep sockets. 14mm and 916 are so close that in most cases they are cross-compatible. And in this case, they were the same exact external diameter which made them perfect for our use. And by our use, I mean we're going to cut one of them in half. We clamp the 14mm socket in the vise and use the angle grinder to cut the drive square off of it. Then we cleaned it up and squared it off on the sander, trying to keep it relatively cool by dipping it in water. We don't want to overheat the whole thing because we would like the socket to keep its heat treat. Anytime you're significantly heating up plated metal, there is a chance of burning off that coating. And the vapors that come off of these coatings are not anything you want to be breathing. So it's a very good idea to work in a well-ventilated location and wear some kind of respirator. We'll grind a bevel into the outside edge of our half socket, and do the same for the hex side of the 9 16th socket. Then we'll put the two pieces together and clamp them as straight as possible to tack weld them together. For this particular use it doesn't really matter that much, but we took our time and got the socket pretty darn straight. Then, in short passes, letting it cool down in between, we welded the socket all the way around. And after a final quick and dirty cleanup on the sander, we had a custom extra long 14mm deep socket. It's worth noting that you can absolutely go on the internet and buy something like this, but they're not super common and they're not super cheap. This one was essentially free. Also, buying things in advance and being prepared like that isn't always how things go. And now that we have a tool that'll make at least one part of the job significantly easier and faster, let's get back underneath the Jeep. This time, when Rob drove it over, it barely made it. It was stumbling, sputtering, and hacking up a lung worse than it ever had before. So trying to fix or at least diagnose the problem was more important than ever. Before messing with anything else, we want to make sure those strap nuts are actually going to come off and our socket isn't going to snap in half, so we'll go ahead and test it out. They're definitely quite stuck, but the impact gun and some WD-40 made all the difference. Pretty soon they were moving relatively freely and we were confident enough to continue with disassembly. After breaking off my nemesis the plastic clip last time, I had just zip tied the fuel hose and the wires up to the body of the car. So we'll cut off the zip ties and get those disconnected. The electrical sender for the fuel pump and the tank level sender was easy enough to separate. We decided to leave the fuel hose connected to the sender for now and just disconnect it at the filter. This will drain out the gas from the hose and some from the filter so be prepared to catch it. We'll also put a cap on the filter to prevent it from leaking any more while we work. There are two evaporative system vents on the top of the tank and we can just pull the hose off the steel hard line on the body of the car to disconnect those. Meanwhile, Rob is once again disconnecting the filler hoses. And with those totally separated, we'll support the bottom of the gas tank with a transmission jack and put just a little bit of upwards pressure on it. And we can roll back underneath and use our extra long socket to completely remove the gas tank straps. That would have taken a hundred years to do by hand. Yeah, you're probably right. At the rear of the Jeep, up towards the trailer hitch, they're simply hooked into the body and you can twist them and drop them out of place. Thank you. 
With both straps loosened, the only thing holding the tank up is the transmission jack. We'll finish removing the other strap against its will and start lowering everything down. It's definitely a tight fit and kind of scrapes both sides of the trailer hitch receiver on its way down. Oh, I got it. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh. Hey buddy, you want some tow hitch? <laughs> oh no. We'll also take another look around and make sure everything is disconnected and nothing's getting hung up. With everything looking good, we'll tilt the whole gas tank sideways to help us drop it free of the Jeep. Since the Jeep is still sitting on the ground, we didn't have a lot of height to work with, so we'll slide it off the transmission jack and pull it out from underneath. And there we have it, there is our 96 Jeep Cherokee gas tank. It's a wee bit rusty, but not, doesn't look too bad yet. There's some of the expected surface rust, but it actually doesn't look too bad and we don't see any obvious holes. It's got some pretty bubbly spots on here, but a lot of the stuff on the top is just... Still surface, yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm worried about. Yeah, we should first. look at the bottom. These are just, you know, happy to be somewhere. The gas tank has this plastic under tray that's held onto the gas tank with four clips. It seems like it's probably supposed to be more than four, but that's how many were on here. There's one missing in the front. Ah. Oh, no, actually there's two missing. Ah. There's supposed to be one there and one So what there. is it when we have one on the front? Yeah. We'll split them. We'll do like two in the back yeah. and we'll split it two in the front. It'll be all right. Who needs replacement parts for this thing? And with those removed, we can lift the gas tank off of that plastic guard. The plastic is rusting. Ah. Oh. You can actually still make out the factory label on this gas tank, which is kind of neat. Oh, it's so dry rod. Yeah, well, uh, Maybe. I don't know if I have one of those. Oh, no! <laughs> I don't have a lot of fuel injection hose. Yeah, you can take it off. It'd be easier to take the hose off now while it's, it's stuck in place. I don't know what I trust more. This or putting a socket on it and possibly rounding it off. Well, you can round it off first and then come back at it with the screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, true. Or we'll just take the bolt cutters and cut it off. Oh, it. Oh, it's doing it. Extra crusty. Next, we'll disconnect the crusty fuel hose from the sending unit. The worm gear hose clamp forgot how to properly hose clamp, but we got it loose enough that we can remove the hose. It's just backing the screw out. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it just wants to <laughs> gently remove it. Oh, suck it. I'm gonna need to need that back. It's part of the Jeep now. No! <laughs> Gimme. Mm -hmm. Gimme. Mm -hmm. Gimme. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hey. Next, we need to remove the old fuel sending unit from the tank. Since we had previously done this and freed everything up, it came loose very easily. It was also nice to not be doing it underneath the Jeep with rust raining on our faces. The hammer and the pry bar makes quick work of the lock ring and pretty soon we have it loose. We'll slide that off, then we need to finagle the whole sending unit out of the tank. Okay, don't breathe any of this. Ooh, it's so crusty. And there you have it. There is the original fuel sending unit with the fuel pump that we replaced almost two years ago. And very quickly after removing it, we had a very promising lead as to our problem. Clearly, the inside of the gas tank was pretty disgusting. Rob had put at least a tank or two of gas through it at this point, so we had hoped some of that would clear out, but maybe that was wishful thinking. Last time it was super it was, crunchy. Now it's just smooth, as smooth as can be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, oh man. Look at the bottom of the sock. Literally has slime on it. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna have to do something with this tank. We can't just throw a new one in. Is this, am I gonna have to cut the tank off around your hand? <laughs> New pump, who is? Some of the sock is just coated. It's not, it doesn't seem unlikely that the strainer might just be clogged. Also, this it's new, this new pump already looks like it's oh, disintegrating. Yeah. So there's that. It's a bit of a hostile environment in there, I imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I don't think gas is supposed to be cloudy, <laughs> you guys. Little, <laughs> it looks like swamp water. It's a little water. murky. Well, you can drain it and then just like slosh water around in there. I don't have like any special gas tank cleaner stuff. Okay. Well, I can just use whatever. I'll just put spray nine in it and just. Literally anything is gonna be an improvement. So. 
Okay, no, yeah, it's just the whole sock. The whole sock is completely coated. Hmm. It's almost like this could have been the problem. It's not helping. No, no it isn't. So the solution, well, either way, we need to replace this because I don't, I don't know. There might be a way to save, there's... there might be a way to salvage that, yeah. but it's probably not worth it. So we have a whole new thing. We just got to make sure we clean up the tank so that it doesn't destroy the new one. We decided that we had to at least attempt to clean out the inside of the tank. It seemed extremely likely that the engine stumble was caused by the clogged fuel pump pickup filter. It made a lot of sense, and just by cleaning things out, it was something we could test relatively easily. Just to get things out of the way, we also disconnected the hoses for the gas tank vents. Since the vents are plastic and the hoses are very stuck, we had to be very careful when removing them. And with those separated, the gas tank is as far apart as we're going to take it. Even that's got some rust. The plastic is starting to rust. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stop buying all this rusty plastic. Next, we'll drain the gas out of it. I need to note that some of the ways we handle gas in this video are maybe a little cavalier. It's obviously a flammable liquid that puts off highly flammable vapors, and you need to respect that. We're emptying the gas tank into 5 gallon buckets because it's convenient and will keep the mess down, but we are not storing it in them. All of that exposed surface area means the gas is quickly flashing off into a vapor, which could be pretty dangerous. I probably don't need to say this, but I feel like I should. Try to be responsible, please, and stay safe out there. Mm. Oh. Splashy, splashy. I don't think, I don't think gas is supposed to bubble like that. I don't think I've ever reported. That looks like a piss bucket. <laughs> I'm not saying it isn't. The gas coming out of the tank looks more like apple juice? Is this gonna make the bucket cleaner or dirtier? Um... Once it settles down in the bucket, you can see how dark and cloudy it is. We drained right around 15 gallons from the 20 gallon gas tank. I can still hear something in it. You heard that, right? You heard I that didn't hear it. nothing. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> to keep the gas from flashing off too quickly or from getting even more contaminated, we simply covered the buckets up with some cardboard. This is almost definitely a crime. And with it actually empty, we can finally take a look inside the gas tank. Oh. It's really bad. Who did this to you? Nature. Hey Mike, what could be the problem? I don't know. Weird. Why was the Jeep bogging so bad? <laughs> I have no idea what the problem could have been. It looks perfectly fine to me. Yeah, it's uh... I don't know. Oh my god. It's uh... It's pretty rusty. It's like Silent Hill. Even after seeing that, Rob still just wanted to clean it out and throw it back in the Jeep. Put it on camera. We're gonna wash this out, put it back in there? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who has time to buy a new tank? Because if we want to get a new tank for it, it's going to have to sit here. And if you haven't noticed, it already kind of looks like a parking lot or a parts yard. Okay, new plan. We're going to we're gonna buy a new gas tank. <laughs> yeah, we're buying a new gas tank. But for today, we're going to just clean this one up a little bit and throw it back in there and see if it fixes the problem. Clean up, his, clean up the strainer on there, too. Let's see how it goes. Fill her up, boss. High octane. High octane, <laughs> H2O. <laughs> This is supposed to help the rust problem, right? We started off just filling the tank with some water, sloshing it around, and dumping it back out. This did help with some of the larger chunks of rust, but this tank was in dire straits, so it needed a bit more. This was on the bottom of the tank? Yep. It kind of feels like somebody put potting soil in my, my gas tank. Oh god, it's, man. It's got that consistency. It just feels like dirt at this point. That's, uh... That's real nasty. You you have to scrape this off the bottom of the tank. So I don't think sloshing it is going to do the trick. I'm just pulling like handfuls of it. And so out came the pressure washer. We tried to use the detergent nozzle, but it just wasn't working. I think the hose is too small of a diameter and it just doesn't want to feed. So we just poured some degreaser in the tank and used a regular nozzle to blast off as much as possible. As mentioned previously, we had stopped and done some thinking and looked up the price of a new gas tank. We found one for around 80 bucks and decided that that was really the only way to fix this. By pressure washing the tank, we can probably clean out a lot of what's in there, but definitely not all of it. 
And since so much of the inside of the tank is rusty, that's only going to get worse over time and introduce even more junk into the gas. With the right chemicals and time and effort, this tank probably could be saved, but since replacements are so cheap, it's probably not worth it. But for the time being, we decided that cleaning out the gas tank was our best option. There are a few benefits to doing this. First, the Jeep doesn't have to sit around. We can put it back together and he can keep driving it. Second, since we are not installing the nice new fuel sending unit into this crusty old tank, the only thing we're actually doing today is cleaning things up. So if we put it back together with a relatively clean gas tank, an unclogged strainer, and use all the same parts and it fixes our engine stumble, then we know for sure what the problem was. So we figured, what the heck, and we spent our last half hour of daylight cleaning things up as well as we could. And at the end of that, this is where we were. Things were looking much, much better, and the pressure washing had removed a whole lot of the loose rust. I still see some sediment sitting in there. I can probably stick my hand in there and just get a paper towel. Yeah, I figured we, I would like wipe it out a little bit before we tried to do anything anyway. So the gas tank is as good as it's going to get, but what about the gas we drained out of it? It's definitely still good, but it also definitely needs to be filtered. Here is the super basic gas transferring and filtering system I had put together previously. It is a Holly branded carburetor clicky clack fuel pump and filter that actually came installed on the Datsun 280Z featured on this channel. On the inlet side in front of that filter is yet another inline filter and then a hose running into the bucket full of gas. The outlet side is just a hose running into a clean, empty gas can. The pump is hooked to a car battery and operated using a toggle switch. For the future, it would be a good idea to make those wires longer so the battery can be located farther from the gasoline. But this basic setup did the job and we filtered and transferred all of that gas. I'm sure this isn't getting the gas 100% clean, but even if it's 95%, that should be just fine. The gas in the cans appeared perfectly clean and was almost clear, which is much more like it's supposed to look versus the old cloudy mess. We kept consolidating the gas in the buckets as we went, and this was the bottom of that last bucket. So that's just the grime that came out with the gasoline, and it's certainly not all of it. It's not that hard to imagine that things were clogged, and that's why the engine was not getting the fuel it needed. And now that everything else is ready, we need to take a look at the fuel sending unit. Just terrible. I think we might have reused that, I'm not sure. The rubber piece. Oh, this piece, yeah. Clean that out, what is that even for? It is definitely pretty gross. We'll remove the pump and the fuel pickup sock. The gas coming out of the pump appears fairly clear, so that strainer seemed to have been doing something, which is also evidenced by all of the gunk that is stuck to it. You just light a match, you can get the residue off real quick. Oh, yeah. To clean out the strainer, we'll spray through it with brake clean. This isn't perfect or ideal, but neither was pressure washing our rusty gas tank. So we just need things to be clean enough that they'll work for a few weeks and prove that the problem was the clog. With everything as clean as it's going to get, we'll reinstall the strainer onto the pump and the pump onto the sending unit. Then we'll put the sealing o-ring back on the gas tank and feed the sending unit back inside of it. <laughs> well, now hang on there. No, you got it. What? Well, okay, no. It's in. No, it's in. this has to go in first. No, it does, does it? Yes. Does it? Yes. Does it? Yes. That's why nothing ever gets done. Ah! Okay, wait, Rob. Yes. Rob. There we go. That's a thing. It's a pain to get the o-ring centered and the alignment notches correctly into place, but eventually we do get it figured out. And we can slide the lock ring back into place. And once again, we'll use the hammer and the pry bar to hammer it home. And with that reinstalled, we'll drop the gas tank back on top of its plastic cover. All we did was use pliers to hold the plastic cover up against the steel of the tank, and then we push the clips into place. We'll also reinstall the hose onto each of the gas tank vents. We'll also be reusing that crusty fuel hose because we didn't have a suitable replacement on hand. And with all that back together, it's time to put the gas tank back into the vehicle. We'll start by shimmying it back up onto the transmission jack. Then we'll raise it up a little bit and get things lined up. Once it's approximately in place, we'll hook the gas tank straps back up into the body. 
It helps to do this with the gas tank a little bit forward so that you can more easily see what you're doing. With the straps hooked up in the rear, we'll slide the gas tank back a little bit, then we'll jack the tank up the rest of the way with everything aligned and reinstall the nuts onto the J-bolts. This is definitely awkward, but eventually we managed to get that threaded on and we'll repeat the same process for the other side. And with them both in place, we'll once again use our extra deep socket on the impact gun to cinch everything down. I had to flip the nuts over to get them to thread on, but the other side is so rusty it, it doesn't fit in the socket. <laughs> And with the tank secured, we can slide back out the transmission jack and start hooking things up. And we'll finish tightening down the tank straps with the hand ratchet. Then, as the adage goes, installation is the reverse of removal. We'll reconnect the fuel hose, the evap hose, the fuel sender electrical connector, and of course the filler hoses. And once again, we'll use zip ties to re-secure the loose wires and hose. Then we're done! The cleaned tank and sending unit is all back in and we'll finish the job by pouring back in our filtered gasoline. And once all 15 gallons have been poured back in, it's time to start the Jeep up. As the fuel pump is primed and the engine is started, we'll look all around for gas leaks and make sure there aren't any. The engine starts right up and is sounding good. And luckily, there don't appear to be any fuel leaks from that questionable hose. The fuel gauge still isn't working, but that's not entirely surprising. We let it run for a few minutes to make sure nothing was going to develop, and then we took it for a drive. We hit the road, and Rob gave it some heavy throttle application. What do you know? No stumbling. That was to the floor. <laughs> cool. The engine's running better than either of us had ever heard it run before. And even towards 5,000 RPM, it's still sounding good. Here that we finally found out what the problem was with the Jeep. And what do you know, it was something that was entirely foreseeable and preventable. Before the first time we installed that fuel pump, we knew the tank wasn't going to be in great shape since it had been sitting. But with the Jeep sitting out of state, it would have been a trickier proposition to drop the tank and clean everything out. We also definitely underestimated exactly how bad the tank was. And perhaps Sean was just a bit optimistic, thinking we could just throw a fuel pump in it and be good to go. It did get us on the road, and quickly, but it gave us a headache for quite a while there. At least now we know what the issue was. But even though it was a lot cleaner than before, and it was working at the moment, we didn't have the highest of hopes it would stay that way. So, the next day, Rob ordered a new gas tank, and it was a good thing because pretty soon after this, the Jeep started having a little bit of sputtering again. It took several days of driving it, and it was just a very light sputter as opposed to the heavy issues it was having before cleaning the tank, but it would appear that the fuel pickup did once again get clogged. In the next episode, we'll get that new gas tank installed and cover some other work. But it seems like this is a good place to end this one. Sorry to take you all on that overly long wild goose chase trying to figure out what the problem was, but it's satisfying to finally have that mystery solved.